I should be brief and painless. As long as you don't blow it. How am I gonna blow it? By opening your mouth. A word to the wise, be nice to the judge. Humble, contrite, courteous. You lost me at humble. See, that's what I'm talking about. If you act like a bonehead in there, you could end up going to jail. The worst that'll happen is that they force me to stay and be Dr. Hughes' whipping boy for the next decade, which I'm sure would make you very happy. If it would force you to stay in Oakdale as my roommate, it might. You just can't resist me, can you? See, that's exactly the attitude I'm talking nah, about. it's gonna be fine. I probably won't even have to say that much. As long as Mr. Snyder comes through for me, it'll all be okay. Well, I hope he does, for your good. Jacob and I will miss you, though. Dallas is just a plane ride away. All right, go get a front row seat. I'm gonna go practice being humble in the mirror. Practice hard. Okay. Henry, what are you doing here? I'm making sure that menace to society and to me gets what he deserves. What are you doing here, Henry? You have nothing to do with this case. Oh, I think it has everything to do with me. Uh, he is a danger to the public, and I am part of the public. Ergo... Stop it. You've had it in for Reed since the first day you met him, and I have no idea why. He's a slob. So what? You don't live with him? He's full of himself. Not a crime. He had me quarantined for tuberculosis. A misdiagnosis. Oh, really? I didn't think the great doctor made those. Henry, stop it. Oh, I will not stop it, okay? He doesn't even deserve to practice medicine. Look what he did to me. He broke your finger? No, it's it's a sprain. So how did it happen? I, I, I slammed it in a door. That's not the point. Look at this humiliating splint that he's made me wear. I've been, I've been slapped by three old ladies today who thought I was being rude. You have no idea how ridiculous you are right now. Okay, he should be ridden out of town on the rail. All you have to do is keep your mouth shut. Let the trial go on and you'll get your wish. Maybe not on the rails, but in a first-class seat on the first plane out of here to Dallas. Yeah, so he says. Well, he can't wait to get back to his practice. Why would he lie? I mean, that's what guys like him do. It's, it's, it's pathological. I love how in your own way you think that you're protecting me, <sighs> but you're not. Sweetie, he's, he's, he's trouble, okay? And I don't think he's gonna leave, even, even if he is acquitted. Henry, what are you gonna do? Whatever has to be done. Let's get things started, shall we? And so, as upsetting as it was, I do believe that the accident was just that, an accident. Uh, Dr. Oliver might have been a little careless, but I don't believe there was any malicious intent in it. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, I'd like to add something, if I may. At a previous hearing, Dr. Oliver was remanded into my custody, and he spent that time with me at Memorial working under my supervision. Here it comes. It is uh, well known that he is one of the most highly thought-of surgeons in his field. I'm not about to say anything that would contradict that. He is a fine physician. It's a, a privilege to have him at my hospital, and it was an honor to watch him work. But I have to admit that he uh, can be obnoxious and overbearing. And criminal? Well, it's not a crime to be unlikable. <laughs> well, yeah, it should be. Your Honor, Dr. Oliver is a dedicated physician. And underneath that gruff exterior, he is a profoundly caring one, too. He took a bad situation for him and made it workable. And I hope that you will take that into account. I made a career studying the brain. I still don't understand human nature. Well, it's not always about the brain. Sometimes it comes from the heart. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the truth is, Your Honor, I can't stand Dr. Reed Oliver. Finally, a witness with some sense. But it's also the truth that I bullied him. I, I forced him to come to Oakdale. He had a lot of patients back in Dallas who really, really needed him. But I tricked him into coming here because somebody that I care very much about needed him as well. And quite frankly, he's the best there is. Oh, please. 
When Dr. Oliver found out what I did, he was upset. And I can't blame him. He wanted to get back to Dallas, to his patients, his practice. His golf game. But because of me, he almost missed his flight. So I let him borrow my car. He didn't steal it. I let him take it. And that's when he got into the accident with Mrs. Hughes. If the car wasn't stolen, this isn't a criminal matter. It's just a waste of my time. You want criminal? I'll give you criminal. Your Honor, if you let this man go freely, it will be a perversion of justice. He is a dangerous kidnapper. Oh, for the love of Pete. Henry, sit down. No, I will not be silenced. He, he, he's a menace to everyone in this courtroom. He's a menace to everyone in Oakdale. Well, then keep your mouth shut so I can get back to Dallas. Y your Honor, I demand to be heard. Thank you. This man, this person who calls himself a doctor, without reason and for nothing more than personal grievances, held me unlawfully in quarantine after falsely diagnosing me with TB. And the things they did to me in there, it's unspeakable. Mr. Coleman was quarantined as a precaution. He displayed signs of the infection. We couldn't risk a serious infection being spread to the other patients. And as for the unspeakable things that were done to him, it amounted to nothing more than blood being drawn. Uh, may I point out, it was more blood than was necessary, and I wasn't even sick. I showed no signs of tuberculosis, but I was held against my will for hours simply because I tried to convince this guy to move out of my friend Katie Snyder's home. No, no, don't drag me into this. Bob, you want to straighten this out for me? Mr. Coleman is uh, exaggerating, Your Honor, and quite a bit, I might add. Case dismissed. What a travesty. I wouldn't be surprised if you paid the judge off. You want to know the best thing about leaving this town, Hank? Never seeing you again. And don't bother waving goodbye. I wouldn't want you to hurt your finger. Mr. Snyder, thank you. I kept it my end of the bargain. Now you keep up yours. Get no his side back. You should be in prison. Don't worry, I'll be out of here just as soon as I wrap things up. What would it take to get you to change your mind? About what? Leaving town? I respect you a lot more than I dislike you. We could certainly use you at the hospital. Well, you're being generous. Calling that place a hospital. We do the best we can. But you haven't answered my question. What would it... What would it take to keep you here? Well, let's see. How about a state-of-the-art neurosurgery unit, a ridiculously outrageous salary, and a title with the word genius in it? How's that grab you? You drive a hard bargain. That I do. Good luck, Dr. Hughes. I wish I could say it's been a pleasure. Oh, my God. The guy is so arrogant. Well, I can't... sometimes people are good enough that they can get away with that. You know, I wish I could uh, offer him what he needs. Are you kidding me? I say good riddance. No, it didn't do us any good. I don't have the kind of money at the hospital to give him the kind of surgical unit that he needs, and that's too bad. What if I said I might know where you could get that money? What? That's a lot of money, Bubbles. What are you doing? No, 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 no. Do not even think about it. Not me, no. Uh, excuse me. Henry, come back here. No. Henry, listen. You can follow me from here to Chicago, Katie. It won't matter. There is no way in hell that I'm funding some new neurological unit just to keep that low-life, good-for-nothing Reed Oliver here in town. Why not? What is the difference? You don't want the money. I know, but I don't want to keep Dr. Jekyll around either. Well, forget about Reed. Think about unburdening yourself of that Stenbeck money. The closure that you claim to want no, 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 is just no, no, no. a signature I, 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 Stop, stop. You're not getting under my skin. Not this time. It won't work. This is just the kind of beautiful gesture that Vienna would want. You're playing the Vienna card? That is a low blow, Katie. That's a low blow. Stop being so defensive and listen to me. This is your chance to do the right thing. Where was your sense of doing the right thing when I offered to give the money to Jacob? This is so different. R really? How? How? Because that was passing blood money onto a child. This is doing something good for other people. Reed put this idea in your head, didn't he? No, absolutely oh, not. Oh, yes. Don't you see? He's just using you to get what he wants. It's classic manipulation, Katie. You're really taking me off. I can't believe this. If you won't even consider doing this, you are not the friend I thought you were. Now, that sounds suspiciously like blackmail. I wonder where you picked that idea from. This has nothing to do with Reed. Stop using your grudge against him as an yeah. excuse not to do the right thing. Oh, wow. I cannot believe it. How low will you stoop for this? You know what, Katie? Maybe you're right. Maybe we really aren't the friends that we thought we were. Hi, 
Hi. Hey, any luck with Henry yet? No, not yet, but I'm not giving up. Well, on behalf of the staff of Memorial Hospital, we wish you the best of luck. Mm. Thanks, I think I'm gonna need it. You know, I didn't think Henry had any interest in keeping the stand back fortune. Well, sometimes what Henry says and what Henry does are two completely different things. Mm. Well, if there's anything I can do to convince him that we could really use that money, just let me know. I will. Thank you. But I think I might have another idea. Oh, keep in touch with us. I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Ah, voicemail. Deanna? Hi, it's Katie. 